I guess I said it wrong. Before going out to play, George gave himself extra time, just like yesterday. Hey, good news. Mr. Rufflick says he'll be back tomorrow, especially for you, to set up the blimp ride. Oh, we can still ride the rough... The roughage is very, very good for you. George gave himself another hour, so he'd be sure to see the blimp at sunset. Ooh, just make sure you're on time. Oh, don't worry. I'll be early. Hey, you've still got some playtime left, George. <laughs> and I've still got a lot of time left to read. Can't be late. <laughs> Jelly donut? No, thanks. I thought you were going to get here early to talk to Mr. Ruffweek. And here I am, bright and early. He left two hours ago. What? I, I, the, I, I, that's not even possible. No, there's nothing wrong with this clock. Are you sure? Because I, I am later every day. Ah, that clock runs as well as I do. <clears throat> okay, I'll go get your other clock and watch. Boy, I hope you're more reliable. But sorry, Olga. It's nothing personal. Ooh, I'm gonna be late for book club. <sighs> if only there were more hours in the day. More hours in the day? George could help with that. <laughs> oh, this is great! I'm on my 27th book, and you may never have to go to bed again. <laughs> George, don't do that. It... Wait a minute. Have you been changing the clock? <laughs> oh, no wonder I... Always late. <sighs> George, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, because our clock has to have the same time as all the other clocks. Huh? Your changing the clock caused us to miss a ride in the rough week blimp. <laughs> well, we do have one last chance. <laughs> Tomorrow. But, George, we have to show up on time. Can't be late. <laughs> Mr. Ruffweek, this is the man I was telling you about. I'd like to set up a blimp ride. Too late. I'm flying to Cleveland this afternoon for the Sausage Festival. Oh. Sorry, George. Oh, no. It's for a monkey? Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> This sausage can wait. I've never flown with a monkey before. <laughs> now, would you like to be my co-pilot? <laughs> wow. Hey, George, you can see our apartment building. <laughs> I guess staying up late all week is finally taking its toll. <laughs> Hundley decided to find a place for Georgia's stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Huh? George knew something in that basement must have scared Hundley, but he wondered what. Huh. Hundley couldn't let George go into that basement all by himself. He was a lobby dog, and this was his job. <laughs> there was nothing to be afraid of down here. <gasps> Except for that creepy noise. <laughs> Calm down! Something in that basement must be frightening them. I can't see a thing. I, I'm putting you two down, all right? <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we searched this entire basement and there's nothing scary about it. I guess we'll store the boxes here. I'm going upstairs to grab some more. Oh. <laughs> Hundley didn't know what this was for, but he knew it wasn't dignified. First, George had to figure out exactly where that noise came from. Except, it seemed to come from every direction. But how could George get close to the creepy noise without getting close to the creepy noise? George was right. You should save everything, because you never know when you might need it. <laughs> to help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. They'd found it. <laughs> oh, my! What a creepy noise! Yeah, I guess we should go down and take a look. Uh, after you. No, 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 after you. Huh? Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Aw, Hundley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! Fancy, beautiful wrapped present. <laughs> Why just wrap empty boxes? <laughs> <laughs>
This is not a display, it's, it's a story. Remains of the birthday. Brilliant, I love it. Wrapping always hid surprises. So why wrap these if everyone could see right through it? <laughs> <laughs> been looking all over for you. George wanted to play with the wrapper people some more. But he had to get these pants home. George hadn't been gone very long. But when he got back, the present had disappeared. I know how curious a little monkey can be, so I put the present away. That should take your mind off of it. But hiding the present only made George more curious. <laughs> it looked like wrapping on top of more wrapping. <laughs> Maybe there were a hundred layers of wallpaper under here. Or not. But it didn't want to go. Then he thought of a way to make this the perfect bathroom for the professor's birthday. <laughs> uh, is that you, George? Make sure you wash up before Professor Wiseman gets here. <laughs> and would you make sure that bowl of her favorite fresh fruit is out where she'll see it? <laughs> you can't get away with that. You didn't wash. This hand is all sticky. Okay, now, wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened in here? Uh... Oh, Professor Wiseman, help me hide this mess. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, George. Everything okay? Oh, <laughs> I'll be right out. I got your favorite fruit. Help yourself. Ooh. <gasps> Is this a benangerine? You can't put skins on fruit, George. Only nature can do that. <laughs> on the other hand, nature doesn't make benangerines. Uh, sorry, I I'm... Happy birthday from George and me. Oh, you didn't have to. Would you like to help me open it, George? Woo! <laughs> I never would have guessed that's what was in this big box. That's uh that's why it was wrapped that way. Oh, my favorite symphony. You remembered. Thanks. Let's listen to it during dinner. Oh, here, I'll get that. George figured he'd better eat something. Because this was gonna take a while. Did all that while I was gone. <laughs> you know, I think you broke the world's speed record for making a gigantic mess. I think you're old enough to use the vacuum to suck up dirt and crumbs and paper. Ooh, yeah! 
George couldn't believe it. All the mess is stored in this bag. When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. <laughs> okay, stop, George. George, George! Uh, George, this vacuum cleaner is too big for you. Don't make another mess. In fact, don't move till I say so. Just freeze. Not moving is tougher than it sounds, especially for a monkey. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Oh, you can unfreeze now. George, here's your very own dirt dragon. George, I have to make some phone calls. You can clean anything that needs it, okay? <laughs> it didn't matter if George spilled sugar anymore. He could clean it right up. I have the rare stamps. Call me as soon as... George, I can't hear. Vacuum the other room, please. George was running out of things to clean up. Clean up this city. Oh. Of course, there was a whole city out there for George to clean up. <laughs> See you later, George. Hi, Mr. Stamp. Those rare postage stamps are right here on my. Can I call you back? Charky couldn't carry all those small pieces of biscuit at once. <laughs> Lucky for her, her friend George was here. Charky hoped he would guard the pieces for her. Charky forgot that George didn't speak dog. Every day when the nice lady threw birdseed, Compass flew off to tell his friends it was lunchtime. Oh, I've got to find George before he empties that bag. I wonder how much stuff it can hold. The vacuum just vacuumed up my winning lottery ticket. <laughs> George was a happy hero, thinking of all the animals and people he had made happy. Isn't it working? What good is a superhero without a vacuum cleaner? When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. <laughs> of course, it was time to empty the bag. <laughs> and there was the perfect place to get rid of everything that was in it. George saw everyone he had helped today running towards him. They must be coming to thank him. George, have you emptied this bag at all today? George was happy to be of service. I'm happy to say they're all there. Uh, thanks.
George, would you like to vacuum my place? I have lots of valuable, dusty collectibles. Oh. Valuable collectibles? Uh, sorry, uh, gotta go now. Bye. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> George! Ah. Ah. <laughs> Only one room had an echo like that. he had it. But all he found was a tiny insect that couldn't possibly make such a big sound. Oh, that's a nice recording of a cricket. Was it one of these? <laughs> you know, hundreds of crickets chirping together can make a soothing, peaceful sound. But one little cricket in a quiet house can drive you bananas. <laughs> now that the mystery was solved and George knew what he was looking for, this was going to be easy. Strange new sound. <laughs> and then George set the cricket free to happily hop back to his cricket home. <laughs> Did you free that cricket? <laughs> Good work! I am sure that's one happy cricket. Okay, um, that cricket left us some cleanup work, don't you think, George? <laughs> Whew, all done. <laughs> Ooh, sleep tight, George. Are you sure you put it outside? <laughs> you know, George, if we don't catch that cricket, we'll never get any sleep. I've got it!
The man with the yellow hat didn't have the cricket, but he did have a solution. George, stop right there. <laughs> but don't touch that stuff with three leaves. It's poison ivy. <laughs> if it touches your skin, you get a red rash and blisters. Very itchy. Ooh, yeah. Remember the three leaves. Leaves of three, let it be. I can't get my keys out of my pocket. Can you get them, George, in my jacket, up here? <laughs> that, that, that I guess I'm gonna need your help, George. <laughs> oh. O. M. It's just. It's, it's right. <laughs> uh, George, we've been doing this for two hours. <laughs> George, hold it, please. I think we need to figure out ways I can do things for myself. Um, how would I use those? <laughs> it works. You may be a genius. <laughs> oh, these hit too many keys. Now I've got Dear Mom Burl Furpin Mageggy. <laughs> Dear Mom. I can type this because George is so smart. It works! <laughs> Before they knew it, it was time for the phone call with the scientist. Oh, boy. Okay, okay. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Hasline and the science board. Professor Wiseman said you'd answer our questions about her new Dexacta invention. Y yes doctor Fine. That's strange. The video monitor isn't working. Video monitor? Yes. Surely Dr. Wiseman told you we requested a video conference. Ah, she... she... she must have forgotten to mention it. Please hold. Help me, George! We gotta move all this to the bedroom, now! Oh! We only have one question. Would you demonstrate the mechanism? Uh, okay. <laughs> b b b I, I, I thought I was just supposed to talk. I, I can't demonstrate it because, see, it's it, it's complicated. You said it was easy. If it's complicated, we will not approve it. Oh no 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 no! That's not what's complicated. It, it's a long story. No time for long stories. We're very busy geniuses around here. Uh, uh, please stand by. Don't want to let Professor Wiseman down. Ready, George? <laughs> <laughs> Doctors, the Wiseman dig Zacta. <gasps> <gasps> you sound impressed. Why, yes. Are your hands really that hairy? I, I guess I forgot to shave this morning. Anyway, look how easy. You squeeze the lever to open the pail. <gasps> <gasps> did I did I say something wrong? You have three hands. Three extremely hairy hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a monkey using the Dexacta. I can't use my hands. Sorry. Don't be. If a monkey can use it, then most scientists can. We 
unanimously approve the Wiseman Dixacta for use by scientists everywhere. And we love monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Now he had two shadows to compare. They both looked the same, except one was shaped like a monkey and the other a dachshund. George explained that both shadows moved over stuff the same way, and neither one predicted the weather. Huntley never really noticed a shadow before. It looked dirty. Now we could compare shadows. Hmm. Except she had no shadow at all. <laughs> George had no shadow either. When George came back, the sun was barely up. And Sherry wasn't up at all. He got in position so she couldn't get out without him knowing. Then... He fell asleep. Just like every year, Mr. Glass showed up early, all alone, and set up his video camera. I better do this fast and quietly, and not wake her up. Yeah. If she were awake, she would have seen her shadow. Have a fun morning? It was an unusual Whistle Pig Wednesday this morning. Watch. George? Here's what Mr. Glass had to say about being caught on video holding up a monkey in Endless Park. Now you've got to admit it, it was unique. Unique's not bad. So, a summer over, did he see his shadow? Are you sorry you held up a monkey? Now, today doesn't count, uh, because it was, it was only a monkey shadow. <laughs> now, George definitely had to see what made that whistle pig shadow so special. There'll be a do-over tomorrow morning, a unique whistle pig Thursday. The next morning, George brought Hundley and Yoki along to keep him alert. Please, no monkeys. Monkey, aren't you? Uh -huh. Could you please send Sherry out? <laughs> there, whistle pig. <laughs> See? Now that he'd seen it, Sherry's shadow was just a shadow. know how her shadow can predict the change of seasons? <laughs> it's not magic or science. It's just a fun thing people do. It's unique. If George knew that, he wouldn't have gotten up so early. George went home and went back to bed. But he needed an extra blanket because it started getting colder today. <gasps> hey. 
No chewing under the flowers today. Oh. We just started using a florist. Gnocchi thinks the flowers are snacks for her. You might as well let her eat flowers. She won't eat my food. Oh. I will talk to Chef. This is what comes of letting a cat make cooking decisions. George wondered why Gnocchi wouldn't eat the chef's cooking when it was clearly delicious. Oh. George would watch her and see what she was up to. George could smell the delicious sausages. But Gnocchi had no interest. George, if you would like to stay, Neddy is making a farewell dinner. My cooking is too terrible to serve. Oh. If Gnocchi's eating cat food, she's not sick. What could it be? Uh. Ah. <sighs> what will we do without ravioli? <clears throat> Uh-oh. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Oh, huh. Yeah, I, I have an allergy. It's when your body overreacts to something like food or a, a, a plant or flowers. Some types of flowers can make some people sneeze and cough. <laughs> well, not you. Some people don't have any allergies and some have a lot. Huh? I have to move these away from me or I won't be able to breathe at all. <laughs> that seemed familiar, but George couldn't remember why. Some nice tangy antipasto for you. Ah. Mm. Mm. Kind of bland. George knew the tangy eggplant wasn't bland. <laughs> oh, it's the stuffed up nose. Without a good sense of smell, everything tastes boring. Here's a your dinner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> But for the past few days, she likes nothing. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. George? George had the answer. Of course, you can take the flowers home if you like them. <laughs> well, that didn't work. George, what are you doing in here? What are you... George, I think he's allergic. You shouldn't... <gasps> Your cat is allergic to certain flowers. Here is a list. Oh. Really? But she tries to eat them. Don't let her. Here's my bill. So, George's theory was right. And a lot cheaper. Oh, 
Okay. Meow. One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico. <laughs> <laughs> this will be our special tonight. It's Gnocchi approved. <laughs> if not for George, we would never have known that Gnocchi was allergic to those flowers. Giorgio, you have saved the restaurant and my reputation. I'll give you a free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>